Welcome back to another Battle Wagon Adventure. I have just finished the BBS wheel conversion and now what I want to do is put some white tire lettering on before they go back on the car. So I figured everything's already set up, it's all off the car, might as well do it now. There's a few different ways to do tire lettering. There's stickers you can buy online, but those are, you know, 30 to $50 a set, sometimes more. You can get a white Sharpie paint pen or grease-based paint pen or whatever, and use that, just trace all the lettering very carefully. I've done that previously, and it's a little difficult. It's really hard to get a nice, even layer on all the letters. And really, do I want to advertise that I've got some general Ultimax Route 43 tires? Yeah, probably not. These are craptastic tires. So I'm going to be doing the Battle Wagon Special. If you're like me and you want white tire letters without paying anywhere from $30 to $100 for stickers, there's a much better way to do it. Boom. Basically just make a printout of whatever the hell you want to say. You can either get stencil paper, which is just peel and stick, or what you can do is layer the whole thing with some sort of a masking tape, such as this blue tape here, and trace it directly onto the tire itself. I've got some extra stencil paper I just bought at a local store. What I'm going to do now is trace all my templates over to these, put them on the tires, stick them on, and then just paint it across. For the actual stencil itself, I used a Microsoft Word document, just did some clip art, and then resized it a few times until I got it right. A bit of guess and check, it'll obviously depend on what your tire size is and what size wheels you have as well, as how tall or wide you want the letters to be. I'm going to go ahead and transfer everything over now. I'll resume in a bit. Here you have it. I've got all of my templates traced out. It took me substantially longer than I thought it would, as it usually does. Now they're all ready to go on the tires. The tires are all degreased and dried off from earlier. So I'm going to slap them on, get the Plasti Dip ready, and let her rip. Everything's ready to go. I got my tire letters cut out and uh, now I just got to figure out where I want to put them on the tire. In general, I don't want to put it in these areas. I want to put it on this little uh, kind of groove section so that way it'll actually have something to grip onto. So do I want to put it over the General or over the Ultimax? I'm probably just going to put it over the General. Yeah, that looks like it's pretty good. I'm actually amazed this actually might be the right size. What I'm going to do is peel these off, stick them on more permanently onto the tire. I've already got my white Plasti Dip going in the bucket of warm water. The only one that I'll be reusing is the Enzyme Bob and YouTube stickers. And because I'm reusing those, I won't stick those on permanently, but the other, other four I will. Then I'll tape it off a little better, make sure I don't, uh, you know, paint the whole thing that I just finished as white, and we'll be good to go. Even if you think you got the sizing pretty close, what you find out very quickly is that uh, you're going to have to shift it up and down a few times to get it just right. More or less the way I'm doing this is I'm just centering the letters here, specifically the E, onto the actual letters behind for the tire type. I'm just trying to line it up reasonably center as far as uh, left-right alignment. So there you go, just do this for all of them and once that's all done, just tape off the edges and it'll be ready to paint. I'm running into two primary issues as I do this. The first is that I am getting absolutely mauled by mosquitoes and the second is that on top of the little minor details, especially on the curved edges where my cutting isn't perfect, I still have a flat template that I'm mating up to this curved round surface. So a lot of the smaller areas, the tighter areas, such as inside of the A, those are overlapping on themselves a bit as I go to try to press them flat. So I'm expecting I'll get a little bit of overspray there, but we'll find out how big of an issue it actually is. I'm also worried because these round edges are not quite as clear, it's going to be more noticeable on this than it was on the front windscreen because it's so big something so small in comparison is not really a, a massive deal. It's such a small percent of the size of the total thing. The same size defect on something like this is going to be, you know, 20% of the total size versus 5% of the front. Oh well, I'll do what I can. I'll show you the end result. It is officially the next day and don't let the bathing suit and tropical socks fool you. It is actually 50 degrees out and I don't know how that comes immediately after a 70 degree day. But anyway, here we are. As you can see, the finish on these wheels actually came out kind of decent. They've obviously been sitting a little bit underneath a tree and they have a little bit of uh, dirt and water marks already, which is rather impressive. But other than that, they're in pretty good shape. The lettering itself actually came out uh, pretty well. I'm really a fan of the final appearance of it. As you can see, it is definitely professional quality. The one exception is I reused the YouTube handle stickers and while my tag came out just fine, the actual YouTube one I didn't let sit long enough. That's the one I did first. And frankly, it was 
rather covered in Plasti Dip when I initially put it on. Between that and the additional spray, it just got too saturated and as you can see, very clearly bled through. So I'm putting this on the farthest point away on the car, the passenger rear, so I have to see it the least. And I'm hoping that's good enough that it's never really in my way. I can let someone else worry about it, like all the friends I don't have. The grill also came out pretty good. I'm gonna put that back on now. And uh, other than that, just get these wheels back together and get it buttoned up. Here we are now, the car is back on the ground, all the wheels are installed and the grill is back in. As you can see, my new black again grill is nicely complemented by the copious amounts of bird shit all over the front of the car. Now with the wheels blacked out so they match most of the rest of the car, it's actually looking pretty good. It'll definitely keep a lot of the grime and salt off the wheels here in the New England winters. Over here on the driver's side, it's the same thing. It actually came out reasonably well. I'm kind of surprised by that because nothing ever goes well on an old car like this. Here you have it, there are our white tire letters. And of course, it wouldn't be complete without another battle wagon tagging. Here on the back, as you can see, the first pass using these stencils came out much cleaner than when I tried to reuse them over here on the passenger side. So if you're trying to do the same thing over and over, re reusing the same stencils, I highly recommend you just give it a lot of time to dry out, or it's gonna look like this and run like hell. There you have it, another battle wagon project has successfully finished. I hope you enjoyed and I'll have more material soon. Ladies, just without paying ridiculous price for the stickers that you put on. Oh my god, the number of fucking Harleys and Motards that have gone by is absurd. Goddamn diesel trucks. All right. Goddamn airplanes. Just can't win today with loud vehicles. Even if you think you got the sizing. Jesus, why is it all the loud vehicles today? I do the crafts, man. Oh my God, mosquitoes.